Welcome to Leading the Next Generation with Tim Elmore. I'm your co-host, Andrew McPeak, and our mission here at Growing Leaders is to empower the emerging generations with skills to lead in real life. Hey, leaders, Andrew McPeak here, and joining me, of course, is Dr. Tim Elmore. Good to see you today, Tim. You too. So we've got a really fun conversation. You and I love talking about generations. Yes, we do. And right now, there's a really fun, I, I think it's fun, probably it's miserable for somebody else, but there's a really fun sort of like gathering that's happening because the workplace is probably more generationally diverse than we've ever seen it before. And that's yeah. what we want to talk about today. Yeah. I, I was thinking recently, I know someone from seven different generations right now. Wow. From my aunt and uncle who are in their 90s, they're from the senior generation. My father and mother-in-law from the builder generation. My wife and I are boomers. Well, let's see, Gen X will be next. We got a couple of team members here, Sean yep. and Nicole from yep. Gen X. You're a millennial, yep. so are my children. Uh, Gen Z, we've got Hannah here from Gen Z. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, Weston and Wilson, JT and Tyler, so yeah. they're, they're alphas. So yeah. it's amazing. And and five of those generations are still working at some place around the country. That's so true. Yeah. And that, that naturally creates um, both the opportunity for collaboration yeah. and conflict. Yes. <laughs> and, and we're seeing both of those. Yeah. Collaboration and collision, may, yes. I, may I say. <laughs> yeah, so here's one good say. example. Yeah. Um, I heard a 19-year-old member of Generation Z uh, recently use the word chuggy uh -huh. as he was describing an older person that was trying to too hard to look trendy and hip and cool. And I began to inquire, who was this older person? How old were they? 29. <laughs> So I'm going, oh my gosh, you're a Gen Zer making fun of millennials? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you and I both have been on college campuses. Sometimes you'll hear a senior in college go, what's up with a freshman? Yeah. And you're going, you're just three years apart. Yeah. But the change happens so rapidly, there yeah. is a gap even within a generation. Absolutely. This is, I think, one of the reasons people have started talking about micro generations. Yeah. Or even I've heard shoulder generations. Yeah. There's all these different terms. And I think a, a large part of it is it only takes about four or five years for one kid to look at another kid and go, I don't know if I identify with everything yes, they got going right. on, you know? Yeah. So that, that uh, it's, I think it's easier to find separation and division and differences maybe than ever before. It is. And then of course you have the other lot of people that would say, I don't want to be stereotyped. I'm not just an X or whatever. Yep. And I would say the goal in these conversations is never to stereotype. Absolutely. It's to understand. Yeah. And we have talked before about people who go, I'm not sure if I'm an Xer or a millennial. And I would say if you're on the back five years of any one generation or the first five years of another, you're going to be called a tweener where yep. you may adopt characteristics of both generations. Yeah. So it's it's a social science more than a science, Absolutely. but it's very real. We hear workplaces and school campuses and sports teams talking about this all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's important to remember that when we study generations and we ask questions and even talk about demographics, we're going to yeah. talk about some of this today. We separate people and yeah. ask them questions so that we can figure out how to bring them back together. Yes. That's the whole goal. Yeah, of this it thing. really is. That's, yeah. that's a very good way to put it. So what I found is because we are humans and we tend to move toward the path of least resistance mm -hmm. and the path of least persistence, we tend to associate with like-minded or like people. So we gather at the water cooler in a workplace and we want to be with other people in our age bracket. We don't declare it necessarily or we don't choose it intentionally, but we just migrate yeah. toward our own kind. So, you know, 20-somethings or 30-somethings are going to cluster and 40-somethings and 50-somethings are going to cluster. And while I would say that's understandable, it doesn't make us our best. We are best when we are uh, collaborating, the diverse generations. And what's interesting is I have a new book coming out this fall called A New Kind of Diversity. We do talk about ethnic diversity today very readily. Yeah. We talk about gender diversity fairly readily, mm -hmm. income diversity yep. for sure. Yep. But I think generational diversity is its own kind of diversity. Yeah. And yet, Megan Gerhardt at Miami University in Florida uh, did a study, and she discovered that only 8% of American companies even recognize different generations as a category of diversity. Hmm. We know race is one. We know gender is one. Yeah. But I think it's just as real. Yeah. In fact, in some places where maybe it's all women working in a clothing or all men... 
it's more real yeah. because you don't have the gender thing. You've yeah. got the generous. They're going to feel thing. that that generational diversity even more because there are more things that bring them together in some of those other categories yeah. for sure. So th listeners, think about this. Where are your text message threads going to mostly? Is it your own kind? Yeah. Where are the water cooler conversations? I, that's a proverbial statement. Of but course, yeah. Where do you gather in the kitchen or whatever, at the, or the workroom? We tend to like people who are like us. Yep. And we tend to build a wall rather than a bridge to those who are not like us because it's too hard. Yep. The work is too hard emotionally. Yep. Yep. And I think that's scary because yep. we need each other. Just like we would argue that people of different races need to come together. Yeah. People of different genders need to come together. People of different generations need to come together. Yeah, they do. Yeah. No doubt about it. This is great. So you want proof of what we're talking about? Okay. Of course you do. I always want yeah, proof. Yeah, thank you. I, I thank you for leading yeah. that. Prove point. it, Tim. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, e even looking at hashtags on social media over the last several years, you spotted probably more than I have because you're more active. But I mean, the hashtags on social media are so vivid in their illustrations of different generations. So one that I remember seeing as a baby boomer is hashtag how to confuse a millennial. Yep. Okay. And that was boomers or extras making fun of millennials who were slackers yep. in the workplace. Yep. Okay. You probably. Yep. Or had little... some, some thing that we used to do. Like I saw one that said that with a picture of a pay phone, you know? Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah, right. That kind of how to confuse a millennial yes, exactly. or, or a phone book. Exactly. Here you go. What is yep. that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So here's another one. You guys have rifled right back yes, in a millennial have, generation. Yep. So hashtag OK Boomer. I remember yep. hearing that a few years ago. That was millennials making fun of the older gents and and, and ladies who yes. were, you know, 55 or older or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, and that often was about technology. That was low-hanging yes. fruit, but it could be about a number of subjects, <laughs> right? I beg your pardon. Well, I would never say any of that about you. Of course, Tim, right? You're great with a computer. That's right. Hey, man, oh my gosh. I, people seek me out. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So another one that we all heard was, um, at least I began hearing, I'm sure you heard it before I did, but was hashtag OK Nancy. Yeah. So this was Generation Z making fun of Generation X. Mm -hmm. And of course, Nancy is that stereotypical woman who is always calling the manager at the restaurant for yeah. not being served well enough or yeah. uh, negotiating with a teacher for her child. Child, yep. And Gen Z just got mortified and okay, Nancy, yep. stop. Yeah. Yep. Karen so, is what you'll also hear. Yeah, that's Karen right. Karen and Nancy are sort of that, yeah, that that sort of stereotypical soccer mom who always thinks she knows what needs to be happen. from Alpharetta, Georgia. From I, know Alpharetta. Them. I know them. <laughs> yes, I, they they're not too far away that's from right, here. That's right. That's yep. right. And then uh hashtag doggo. Okay, so that would be generation C making fun of millennials. Yes. Those chuggy millennials. Yes, exactly. That would okay. be another term for sure. That's right. And then um this one was in poor taste. It was in really poor taste. Okay. Thank yes. you for agreeing with me. I never said it. I just want you to know Thank that. you. Yeah. I appreciate it. But uh, it was hashtag boomer remover. Mm -hmm. And it was a reference to um, COVID-19. And yep. many was of the people- It was more dangerous to elderly people. Yeah. Basically. 65 years and older, yeah. uh, their life was, was leaving. So um, all that to say, it's kind of tongue in cheek. We laugh a little bit, but it's evidence of the fact that there is language and vernacular for generations to huddle up together to yep. point out at another one going, do you believe that? Yep. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. Um, You've probably so. heard researchers talk about this idea of in-group bias, right? So yeah. we're always looking for where is my group? And we sort of naturally, when we find somebody we identify with, the one of the first things we naturally do is we sort of get back to back with that person and start pointing at yes. other people. Yeah. Because in clarifying who doesn't belong, I get more secure about my own belonging. Yes, it's true. And I, I see that happen a lot. Social media is sort of a platform that has uh, opened the doors for that to run rampant. It is. And it's something to look out for. Yeah. Yeah, well, we can hide behind a screen as we make fun of exactly. or whatever. Yep. You know, I was just thinking as you were talking, the word prejudice is taken from roots prejudge. Yep. Before we even understand that person, yep. we judge them ahead you're of time. You're 50, so you must yeah. be filling yes. the blank. Or yeah. you're under 35. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So so the diversity we feel, we want to continually point to both the workplace today, but also the school campus. Yeah. We have listeners from both, both places. Um, we feel this diversity on our teams, but sometimes we avoid it rather than facing it. It becomes an elephant in the room. Yep. We all know it's there, but we don't really identify it. Um, I, I might point out for our listeners' sake to wish for some homogenous group of people to work with us is wishing for a world that is long 
gone. Yeah. It's just not, it's not going to come and back. And not probably as advantageous either. No, that's there's right. so many examples. In fact, that's what we're about to get into. But yeah. There's so many examples of different people coming together and being able to accomplish something that a homogenous group couldn't have. Yeah, no doubt about it. So in our workplace, we have four generations and we're not a gigantic place, yeah. but we have baby boomers those seasoned veterans, I that's, might say. That's add. the right term for that. Seasoned that's veterans. That's right. Yes. yes. Uh, and then we have Gen Xers, yeah. and then we have Millennials, mm-hmm. and then we have Gen Z. Yeah. So, and there will be a time w- when we'll have five, when alphas are just old enough to be freshmen yep. in college, and they're jumping on board, and they'll probably bring a whole nother mindset. I absolutely think they will. So each one of them, if I can just kind of cut to the chase and get to the bottom line, each one of these generations brings a different approach to work and the workplace. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I'll just give a quick anecdote on that. We're now hearing Generation Z members that might work at a retail or a fast food restaurant want pay at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, I'm living hand to mouth. My paycheck doesn't pay me very much. I need to get paid at the end of the shift, not the end of the two weeks yep. or four weeks. Yep. Wow, that's a whole other thing, thing for us boomers. To, to yeah. them, it makes sense, right? Because everything's kind of immediate in the rest of their life. Why wouldn't pay be? That's exactly. As well? I want it. I want pay on demand. Exactly. And instant access. That's right. Uh, number two, each each one of these generations embraces a different expectation for the role of work. So I remember hearing years and years and years ago for millennials, meaning is the new money. I certainly know millennials need money, but there was a want, I want purpose in my work. I don't want to just make widgets. I want to make a difference. Yeah. So that was good for bosses to know. Yeah. And then number three, I think each one of these generations shares a different opinion about finances and compensation. Yep. And the great resignation that we've seen over the last couple of years has been evidence that you know, they workers feel empowered. It's a we're seeing the democratization of the workforce. Yep, I feel it as an employer, but you're a leader here. Wow, they feel like they can go, and and yep. and I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying it's this different. is a new spirit. Yeah, yeah, new spirit. Yeah, I was actually just having a conversation with a group um, a couple of weeks ago, and this is one of the questions they asked: Is as Generation Z is entering the workforce, what are changes we can expect? And one of the things I brought up, just as an example of some of the things you've been saying, is uh, when I was entering the workforce, the whole thing about mission was it. And yeah. I, I used to hear bosses would say, uh, a millennial will take a pay cut for a really good mission. Yeah. And that was actually yeah. true, right? Millennials yeah. wanted to join nonprofits like we are here That's at right. Leaders yeah. and yeah. Uh, take on that great mission. What we're seeing so far with Generation Z is uh, Generation Z will take a pay cut for more flexibility. Yeah. For them, it's yeah. not as much about mission. It's about, can I work from home? That's right. Can I come and go? Yeah. Uh, how much paid time off do I get? Mm-hmm. Some of those kinds of things. And we're adapting to that here at we are. Leaders we as are. well. But I think it's just a reminder that every generation is going to have preferences and uh, all those kinds of things as they bring them in. Leaders who are listening, think the word currency. There's just new currencies that are coming out yeah. that we know how to we know how to make the currency and, and spend the currency. It's so true. So here's a great example of the clash that we're referring to before we get into some of the data. Mm-hmm and some of the steps we ought to take. So I'm going to use two fictitious names, even though they're real people that I know, just for the sake of the story, because in some ways it wobbles back and forth on, wow, I can't believe he did that. Yeah. But uh, Sheila and Antonio are two co-workers. Sheila was the hiring manager at a quick service restaurant. Okay. A really good one, by the way. I mean, they're, they're doing very well. Uh, lots of team members coming in. And Antonio was hired... And uh, Antonio seemed to be good at the cash register and things were going pretty well until one day he happened to have a short sleeve shirt on and she noticed a big tattoo on his arm. All of a sudden visible. Yes, all of a sudden visible. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody might go, what's up with that? What's, What's the big deal? Well, that restaurant chain had a policy, no tattoos, right or wrong. That was their policy. That was the policy, yeah. Well, Sheila was a little bit disappointed in Antonio and really upset because it came up in the interview. That was one of the, she goes, now, you know, a couple of our policies. Are you okay with that? Sure, I'm fine. Well, he wore long sleeves to the interview and he wasn't honest. Mm. At the same time, when she confronted him, he was very offended and argued that this tattoo was part of his identity. Mm. You know, and very often you see a young generation, yeah. this is who, you're making fun of who yeah. I you're am. You're trying to change who I am. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and where she going, no, it's your skin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. but, but that's a whole other generational thing. Yeah. So, so they really kind of duked it out and it was hard. And Sheila knew I got a big choice to make. I could let him go and lose a very good team member and mm-hmm. others are going to go, seriously, you let him go because of the tattoo? 
but I could let him stay with the tattoo. He's not going to have it removed probably. Yeah. And other people are going, seriously, you're going to let him go? Okay, I'm getting a tattoo, you yeah. know, a tattoo. Obviously, you don't care about that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So there, you could see she was in a quandary as a leader. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the way she handled it. She ended up sitting down with him and she said, Antonio, I know this is going to be a hard conversation, but we have to have it because you and I both want to get resolve one way or the other. He nodded in agreement. And here's what she did. I'm going to bottom line this, even though it was hours of discussion and thought Back and, and forth seeking and, out wisdom. Yeah. She basically said, you and I need to stand in front of our team and we need to say what's happened. I mean, after all, it's an elephant in the room. People know. Yeah. That Everybody they sees saw, it. Yeah. That's right. And they also know the policy. So they're both going to acknowledge what's what's real here. But then Sheila was, would say, I think you all, team, would agree Antonio's a great worker. So what we've agreed to do is he's going to wear long sleeves mm -hmm. so that he stays within the policy that there's no tattoo uh, visible, but yet we really want to maintain this policy, at least for now. I'll talk to corporate. It may be it will change yeah. next year or the next year, but for now, let's be unified. And it worked. Yeah. She brought the team together. In fact, that conflict actually bonded them rather than separated them, but it took a strong leader with a little bit of backbone. Yep. And a little bit of agency yeah. to make that work. I love that. Yeah. What I heard was perhaps just a little bit of compromise, but based around yeah. care yeah. for the team and great communication. Yeah. That was the other thing I heard, which That's is right. exactly what you need to bring those generations together. Absolutely. So listeners, we're ready for some data. Yeah. Good Hire is, a, is an organization that just released a new study uncovering how full-time American workers... Uh, feel about their jobs last year. 2021 is okay. when the study was so done. So very recent data. They surveyed, for the record here, they surveyed 4,000 Americans, uh, an equal number of baby boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Zers. So there's across the board 25% of each. Yeah. Their findings, at least for me, were really enlightening. So let's just kind of rifle through okay. these. Feel free to make a comment back if you have any. And I have a suspicion you'll have some. I, I do like to talk. Yes, you, you do. know that about yes, me. So. that's right. So number one, um, 83% of all American workers would prefer a four-day work week. 83%? Yeah. Wow. So more than eight out of 10, all generations, it's not just Gen Z, although yeah. Gen Z would lead the way in this. Yeah. Now, I don't think they're saying I want to work less. They're saying I want to condense my, my yeah. work so that I got a chunk of time, three yep. days, yep. to go to the mountains or go to the beach yep. or do whatever. Rather than five days of eight hours, I'd yeah. rather do four days of 10, yeah. get it over with and get a three-day weekend. Yeah. So if you have a say in the policy where you are, just know that was a survey that Worth came looking out. looking into. It might be interesting. Yeah. At Growing Leaders, we don't do a four-day work week, but we do Deep Work Wednesday where you work from home. Friday, work from anywhere, yep. unlimited PTO. Yep. We try to create that that feel of, okay, they trust me. And yeah. maybe if I get my work done in four days, good That's enough. That's great, yeah. Yeah. All right, number two, here's another one. 57% of millennials are very happy. Well, I'm looking at one of them right now. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I gave you a chance to say yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. 50, so over half of millennials are very happy at work, making mm. them the happiest generation of all four. Yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. I don't know if you have a comment on that. But well, everybody's different, right? So yeah. we're all coming from different places. But I do wonder, millennials are in their late 20s into their 30s. 30s. Yeah. So I think millennials are at that time where they're kind of settling in. Maybe some of them are finally making the money they were hoping to make, yeah. maybe stepping into that managerial position they were hoping to yeah. be into. Um, and I also think a lot of millennials... You know, when we entered the workforce where it was around the 2008 economic crisis. Yeah, yeah. So I think any any moment where things are relatively stable and good, yeah. I think millennials are going, it's better than what I started that's right. off yeah, with. That's right. It was a really bad start. And so I think, uh, yeah, the, maybe some of those things are contributing. Makes sense. Here's another one. 22% of Gen Zers are either unhappy or flat out hate work, wow. making them the most unhappy. So these are the entry level jobs, yes, of course. I'm sure that's it's what's no, going it's on. It's not fun. Yeah. They often were set up because they're exposed to a smartphone to the dream job that yep. they'd like to have, which is making an app and a million dollars by 25. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm making Private fun. Private jet here. and all yeah, that that's kind right. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm making fun, but but it's no wonder that about one in five, a little more than one in five would say, I, I just hate this. Yeah. And what I would say is hang in there. Hang this in there. isn't your only job. It's your Absolutely. first job. Yep. Yeah. And those are very different things. We, it, it's hard for them to even understand. We had yeah. a job just like yeah, that. Yeah, that's we right. We really did. So. And yet at the same time, Gen Z would hate the phrase, 
pay your dues. Yes. But yet, in essence, yeah. that's really it. And that's now, not what we're asking, I don't think, not pay your dues, but rather understand the season that you're yeah, in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. you're you're new. Even yeah. if you are awesome, you're new. Yeah. Now, I will say this. Many young employees today are finding what they would try to uh, call or what they would call a pandemic-proof job, mm -hmm. meaning I may be DoorDash driver or Uber uh, driver because I'm in control yeah. of my income and my time. Yep. So makes sense. Yes. Uh, here's another one. 60% of millennials find great meaning and purpose at work, mm -hmm. uh, making them the most fulfilled generation. So happy and fulfilled. How about that? I'm happy for you. I feel like I'm doing great, I Yes, guess. you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Um, Gen Z is the least fulfilled with just 41% finding great meaning and purpose. Now, 41, it's not bad. It's no. just not good. Yeah. So just know Gen Zers um, listening or employers of Gen Zers, your youngest employees very likely, if they're like the rest of their generation, would not be super happy with uh, the meaning and purpose they feel in their yeah. work. Yeah. Here's another one on Gen Z. Gen Z is the least satisfied with work-life balance, while millennials are the most satisfied. So very that's interesting. very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have predicted that. You know, uh, as I'm as I'm <clears throat> seeing this, I'm wondering. You know, one of the things we used to talk about with millennials, especially the uh, '90s millennials, as opposed to the '80s millennials, is this sort of. Uh, it started as the YOLO mindset. Yes, but it's sort of this um, <clears throat> generic optimism. Yeah, I think as they look out at life, and I do wonder if part of this is you know, it's. It's not as great as it could be, but it's still pretty good. You yeah, know? And so yeah. they're more likely to put a seven on a survey than a four on a survey because yeah. they might yeah. see it that way. Well, not only that, but because you were born in 1988, correct? Correct, yeah. So you have had, you were conscious as a teen or young adult of three economic depressions. Or exactly. not depressions, but yeah. downturns. Yeah. The dot-com era bubble, the Great Recession, and then this, what this pandemic did. Yeah. So you know, Wow. It's hard. Exactly. It's hard. Exactly. And I'm old enough to know that. Yeah. And yet here I am employed. Exactly. So, uh, good. I love I'm it. not saying it's great right now. I'm yes. saying it's a lot better than it yes. was. And therefore, it's that's not hard right. for me to rate I high. think that's a fair statement. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Only 30% of baby boomers are completely happy with their pay, followed by Gen Z, Gen X, and then millennials. So uh, less than one out of three... Mm would say I'm I'm happy. And maybe it's because my generation who are retiring in the next few years and retiring at 10,000 yeah. every single day yep. would go, I need more to yeah. do the They're post. They're super conscious of what's yeah. happening financially right now. Yeah, my retirement's disappearing. That. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Here's another one. 68% of millennials are happier working remotely. Uh -huh. I think that's fairly predictable. Not too surprising. Yeah. Young well, parents especially. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. No doubt about it. Although some would say... I need a break. Yeah, you know, from, actually, yeah. I need a break for my yeah, kids. I can so. see both sides on that. Yeah. Uh, while baby boomers are the least happy with remote works because mm -hmm. we got used to decades and decades and dare yeah. I say decades yes. of, of lots of- Still figuring out Zoom two years that's later right. that's right. for yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Only 9% of all American workers surveyed are less engaged and satisfied when working remotely. Mm -hmm. So in other words, everybody did better than we thought. Yes. I wondered what our team produced. I well, remember that. We did really well. Yeah, we did. I was quite pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Not that I thought we had bad workers. I just thought, you know, this gonna be we like? have three enemies the refrigerator, the television, and the bed. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So, All within very close walking distance. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Uh, okay, here's another one. Uh, just a few more. Millennials lead the charge in searching for a new job in the next 12 months with 46, almost half of them planning in the next year. So yep. that's high employers, eyebrows up, antennas up. Yep. Just know we may want to chat and say, are you okay? Is there yep. something we could do to make this uh, work better or more meaningful for you? To me, I think there's a connection here to the great resignation that we talked I do about. Too. I do uh, too. One fifth of the American workforce left their job in 2021. That's yeah. just a crazy number. But I think it millennials is. were leading the way on this. And yeah. it's because of that moment in their careers where they find themselves. Yeah. That big transition yeah. moment. Lots of them see a better job, better pay. Uh, in this case, the grass in 2021, the grass was greener for, yeah. I think, for a lot of millennials. Yeah, I and agree. they sort of chase that. Well, and here's something that I know you and I have talked about this with mm -hmm. you and Anna. Yeah. You're at this stage now, you're thinking about a home. I yeah. don't want to rent, I want to buy. Yeah. And you know, there's there's some money involved. Exactly. Down payments, et cetera. So of course that, they're thinking about that. Yes, that. it makes yeah. sense. It's mm -hmm. not selfishness or whatever. It's just it's that getting, stage of life. Getting real and saying, if I plan to have a family. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, couple more. 
Baby boomers are the least likely to be on the job hunt next year. Uh, so that would probably mean these seasoned veterans are feeling like I'm pretty much in the place. Yeah. I'd I'm like a raise. I'm going to finish it off right yeah. here. Yeah. I won't stay here, but I'd like a raise. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then lastly, um, Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Zers are most bothered by their boss uh, or manager, while baby boomers are most bothered by insufficient pay. So mm. in other words, the greatest um, angst or uh, dissatisfaction would be the um, the boss. Yeah. So do you want to say anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> this conversation just got awkward, right? Dude. No, I mean, yeah. it's not surprising. I think boomers probably would have said the same thing if they were the age of, of one of those other generations. Of course. Oh, no, my gosh. There's probably not as many boomers who are looking at a boss, you know? Yeah. Uh, I also think, as we saw, baby boomers are very conscientious of how much money am I making right now as I'm pre preparing for retirement. So, of course, yeah. that stat is not surprising. Yeah. Well, um, you guys know... We've got some great insights here. We need to dig into them and really figure out where we're going. But before we do that, let's take a quick break because we have a really excellent resource on Generations. It's going to fit perfectly with today's conversation. So let's check it out. Hey guys, Andrew here. I'd like to talk to you about one of our latest resources, Generation Z Unfiltered, facing nine hidden challenges of the most anxious population. Those born since the turn of the 21st century have grown up in challenging times, full of polarization, panic attacks, pandemics, and protests. These shifts have shaped a generation of young people that we call Generation Z, and they are now the most overwhelmed and the most empowered generation in human history. In our book on Generation Z, Tim and I give an unfiltered view of just who these kids are and give teachers, parents, coaches, and leaders practical advice on how to tackle nine of the greatest challenges today's students are facing. Pick up a copy of Generation Z Unfiltered today at growingleaders.com slash store. Okay, Tim, so let's talk about insights. We just heard all of that data. Yeah. Uh, what do mm -hmm. we do? What, what sort of discussion should we have about uh, how to bring these generations together? Well, I think there's some ironies in our takeaway from this data we just we just looked at. Uh, one, uh, did you notice some of the ironies about the millennials? Yeah. So on the one hand, they're the happiest with their work, but the most likely to be seeking another job. Yeah. Talk about that. What What would you say yeah. as a millennial? I mean, obviously, I think uh, we've talked about those two realities of one, maybe things are not as great as they could be. Yeah. But they're also not as bad as they were. Yeah. And so I think that dichotomy is creating this, this feeling of saying, well, I'm not unhappy with my job. However, I could see yeah. how, and, and, and if you're just being frank with so many millennials having just left positions and moved, that yeah. means their friends who didn't change their jobs are watching all their friends switching jobs for better pay or a different situation and going, man, what a great uh, opportunity that's out there. So I can both say, you know, my job's not that bad. However, I'm also looking and seeing there might be more opportunity out there for me. Yeah. And one thought, uh, just playing off of what you just said, one thought that came to me was they might find work fulfilling, but maybe not at the specific job they have right now. Exactly. Yeah. So I love work, yeah. but not this particular task. Absolutely. Um, so, and of course, my wonder is, as an employer is, could we change by connecting better with them? Yeah. Um, if Gen Zers are the least happy with their jobs, but the second most happy with their pay, could we find a better way to remunerate them? Yeah. Um, so we need to give them a task that they can be fulfilled at, yeah. but then get the pay where it needs to be. And Tim, any, I mean, any final other insights that you're thinking of? Yeah. Well, as I look at those numbers, it seems like work-life balance needs some improvement yeah. overall. Yeah. Uh, I've heard people say maybe the issue is not work-life balance as much as work-life blending. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like I've got friendships wherever I am in my neighborhood at the workplace. But I do think um, there's a younger generation that would go, boomers, you live to work. Yeah. And maybe I want to work to live, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and have a life. Yeah. Friends in the workplace and yeah. social time and that's yeah, right. all of those yeah. things. I think yeah. that's so, so good. So I think we got to build bridges rather than walls. We've talked about that already. And some of this data, I hope, helps us do just that. Yeah. Well, um, I think as a way to close, you and I know about a really great leader who practiced this so well. And we really wanted to kind of close on the, a yeah. great example of what it can look like to sort of maximize the abilities and perspectives and really a generational diversity of yeah. the workforce. And there's a great leader who did that. Yeah. Back in 2006, Angela Ahrens was invited by Burberry Coats mm -hmm. in England to fly over from, this, this was an Indiana girl, Angela, 
to fly over and become the CEO of Burberry. So Burberry, in case you don't know, listeners, is a very high-end trench coat uh, maker. Mm -hmm. uh, they do more than trench coats, but a plaid trench coat was the stereotype. High end. When I say high end, twenty five hundred dollars per coat. So it wow. was. Wow. Yeah. It's it's not. We're not talking not about. Just, I don't have one. Let's put it that, that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And they're not found in Target. No, they're not. So nothing against Target. Yeah. But Angela came in because the brand was on a decline. It yeah. was going down. Uh, it was kind of seen as a brand for older women. And those older women were retiring or dying or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they were losing their customer base. When she came in, I love what she did. She connected the generations. Mm. She immediately met her fellow executives, of course. But then she sat down with her youngest team members. And when I say youngest, I mean interns. 20-somethings. Yeah. Most of the average age in the group was 25 years old. Okay. And uh, she began to say, if we were to make a brand or build a brand for your generation, what would it be like? And they just put up on the white wall all kinds of ideas. Yeah. One of the ideas that I loved the most was the art of the trench. Yeah. So it was a page on their website where uh, customers that were usually young yeah. could post a picture of themselves we like to do that uh -huh. in the trench coat, in a, one of the Burberry trench coats. Yeah. So hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. It was amazing. Well, there's a lot to the story, but needless to say, the brand took off. Yeah. But it took off because she turned conventional wisdom on its ear. Yeah. Instead of meeting with her executives, brainstorming, coming up with a plan and telling the young employees and Here's interns- Here's what you're going to do. That's yeah. right. It was just the opposite. Yeah. She let the young people- figure out how to do this to reach their people. Yeah. And then she said, our executive team has the contacts, the network, the yep. budget, yep. we'll do it. Yep. And it worked. The The brand took off just, I, I don't know if it tripled, but it was li something yeah. like that. But the point was this, she would say, and she has said this, I've heard her speak about this. The, the key was getting these generations to work together. And yep. that's my goal in this conversation. Yeah. Do we look at the other generations and say, oh, that's the weak link in our organization? Or do we look at them and say, that's the greatest opportunity in our organization, whether we're young yeah. looking at older folks or older folks looking at younger folks, mm -hmm. I think all of us can come together better than we have before. Absolutely. Great insights, Tim. Thank you so much for this. Uh, as you heard before, if you're looking for a great way to start engaging and what, how do I really lead well these generations, we put out a really excellent resource, Generation Z Unfiltered, which is all about that newest generation that we're leading today. Uh, if you're an employer out there, you're hiring those folks right mm -hmm. now. If you're a teacher, you're leading those folks right now. And so uh, if that's uh, who you're interested in learning more about, head on over to growingleaders.com, click on store. You can find out more about that resource. Uh, as always, if you would rate this podcast, give us five stars wherever you get your podcasts. We would greatly appreciate it. If you found this particularly helpful, uh, we invite you to share it, pass it along to a friend. We would mm -hmm. appreciate that as well. If you want to connect with us online, we're at Growing Leaders and at Tim Elmore, pretty much everywhere you are. And then finally, if you have ideas for this podcast, stuff you think we should talk about or people you think we should interview, shoot us an email. It's podcast at growingleaders.com. We love getting those from you. Tim, thank you once again. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time.